We're here in my bistro kitchen and today we're going to make a salt cod fish cake. They're a very simple recipe. We've been making these in the bistro for over 12 years and they're very popular. And I'll show you how we plate this up and serve this in the bistro at the end of the video. We're going to start off by looking at the ingredients, it's pretty simple. There's three main ingredients and then a couple of other things that we add in. The main ingredient is going to be potatoes. This is a potato dish. We have about 10 pounds of russet potatoes here. Uh, then we have some onions, about two pounds of onions. Uh, we have our salt cod fish bits. The first step is to take these, usually the day before or even two days ahead, cut the bag open, drop them in a lot of water, rinse them a couple of times, and then just uh, soak it overnight or for two nights, three nights, and you want that salt to come out. The times you change the water, the less salty it's gonna be, and then you can add salt in later. Often there's so much salt in the cod that you do not have to add salt later as a seasoning. For seasoning, we have a couple of things here. We have some pepper, and we have some summer savory. I'm also gonna add something else that's local to where I live, which is dulse. And dulse is a seaweed, that grows in the south of New Brunswick on the Bay of Fundy. It's a red seaweed that uh, has a lot of umami to it, a lot of savoriness. We have some eggs as a binder. We have some garlic, which is also going to be used to spice this up. And we're just going to have a bit of wine uh, around for various stages of the cooking process. The first thing we need to do is to peel our potatoes. I'm not going to talk too much about this because I'm sure you all know how to peel potatoes. Uh, I'm going to use a paring knife because uh, it's a lot faster than using a peeler and it may take off a little bit more potato but when you compare the price of a potato to the value of your labor I think it's totally justifiable to do this quicker and then I'm just gonna cut it into chunks and I'm gonna put it in water these russet Burbank potatoes which grow around here are a good potato for this project uh, these ones are nice and they don't have a lot of eyes or anything like that in them so they're good they clean up easy, but they will turn brown or black if you let them out and oxidize. So what we want to do is we want to put these in water right away. The potatoes have been peeled and cubed up, and now they're on the stove boiling away. While we're waiting for that, we'll deal with the onions. Just have some large Spanish onions here, and I'm just going to cut them in half and peel them quickly. We just want like sort of a medium dice here. This is what we want. Garlic. Lots of people try to invent techniques and gadgets to peel garlic. None of them really work. You just have to peel it. You can buy garlic that's pre-peeled, but it's usually total garbage. Once we peel our garlic for this recipe, we're just gonna roughly, just gonna smash it with the side of a knife and we're just gonna roughly chop it. Two pounds or two bags of salt cod that's been soaking for about two days. I've rinsed the water several times. Uh, now the next step is I'm going to drain this and then I'm going to cook it in a pot with some water over the stove to cook it because it's salt cod but it's raw and we do want to cook it. We're just going to check our potatoes. These have been on for a while and if we put a knife in there we can see that the potatoes are starting to break apart and they also slide easily off the knife. So those are ready. We have our salt cod going here, and then I've put this pan on where we're gonna fry up our onions and garlic. So the pan's heated up. I'm gonna add in some canola oil. You can see that's nice and hot and shimmering. So then we'll add in our onions. And what we wanna do here is we just wanna sweat these onions. We're not looking for a lot of caramelization. But I'm going to add some white wine to this. Just slow it down a bit. And then I'm going to add in my garlic. So now I have my garlic and my onions. I'm going to add a bit of salt. I don't want to really season this too much before I try my cod and see how salty that is. Uh, I'm also going to add my dulse in here. And then I'm gonna continue to just sweat this out. It's very close to being done, so I'm just gonna give it another minute or two and then I'm gonna take it off the stove. Check in on our salt cod. It's not quite boiling yet, but it's starting to turn from translucent to opaque, so I know that we're getting closer to where we wanna be. Pot got a little frothy here in the last minute. 
But what we just want to do is we just want the fish to be cooked. It's opaque and it's just should be like flaky so that it comes apart. You can see this easily breaks apart. So it's cooked. It is fish, so it doesn't take very long to cook and we don't want to overcook it. So we're going to strain this. We've also have our onions done over here. So we'll take these things into the back kitchen and we'll assemble our fish cakes. Everything's cooked. So now we have our big bowl. Start with our big pot of potatoes. Mash these up a bit. So we just have a rough mash. One of the things with rusted potatoes is if you overwork them, they turn to glue. So we don't want to overwork these. Next, we're going to add in our onion garlic mix. Now we'll just use a wooden spoon to sort of mix this in. Next, we have our salt cod that's been cooked and strained and you can see it's pretty flaky. What I'll do at this point is I'll just take a little piece of this salt cod. And it's not very salty add this salt in. This is cooled a bit, so I'm going to go in there with my hands with some gloves on. Lastly, we want to add a couple of eggs. Make sure that your mixture is not so hot that the eggs cook because you want to mix them in there. And the eggs are just going to act like a binder. Also going to add in the summer savory. This is our mix. We're all dressed up and ready to party. So I'm going to take this and let it cool a little bit, not too much. It's easier to work with when it's warm and set up for making the cakes. So the last step is to just form our fish cakes. We have our mixture and we have a sheet pan that has a sill pad on it, or you would use parchment paper. Just taking a little scoop and pushing it down into the ring mold like thus. And then we're just gonna slide the ring mold off. We're gonna do that over and over and over again. Your mashed potatoes came out wet. You could add a binder like breadcrumbs or flour or potato flakes to dry it out a bit so it sticks better. We're gonna get, do these fish cakes up. I'm gonna start by getting some baked beans heated up. I'm gonna move these to the back burner. Just let them simmer there. We're gonna do our fish cake in a cast iron pan. We're gonna get it really nice and hot. And put some canola oil in here. Once our oil is good and hot, we're gonna add our fish cake in. While our fish cake is going, we're also gonna do an egg. We're gonna do one egg sunny side up. Add in our egg. Gonna flip this fish cake over. Okay, now we'll plate this up the way we do in the bistro. We'll start by our fish cake and putting it in the middle of the plate. Put our egg, top of the fish cake, some greens here. This is some spinach and some kale in the greenhouse. And we've got a couple of pieces of toast. And then we have some pickled red onion. And we have some green tomato chow. This is how we plate this up in the bistro. Not sure what else you could ask for. Bush has got everything going on.